Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our virtual prayer gathering. We hope you will be joining us again next time. So tag along your friends and family members who are with you right now. And let's join our virtual prayer gathering. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for gathering us all tonight. Thank you for this provision of technology that we can facilitate a prayer gathering despite the distance. We pray that you will be honored in our means. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
you, Jesus. Under your grace, your mercy amazes me. Under your wings, your shadow covers me. Your promise of love, my heart is safely Speak to me, Lord, your servant is listening over the noise. I hear you whispering, my hope has come, and my heart is safely undone.
Good evening, everyone. Thanks be to God for this opportunity that we are gathered virtually to express our thanksgiving to the Lord, praising Him for what He has done, and even offering prayers to Him. Now, this evening, allow me to share to you the passage from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. And my topic this evening is about spiritual resurrection. Last Sunday, we were blessed that the resurrection of Christ proves that our faith is really anchored on the solid ground. Our Lord is alive. And His resurrection also proves that our faith is also real. Because the faith that we have in Him originates from Him. So, that's what we are going to elaborate this evening regarding spiritual resurrection. Let me read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgression. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages He might show the incomparable rich, riches of His grace expressed in His loving kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. These are the words written by Paul to Ephesians. Now, in the previous chapter, Paul was talking about the greatness of God, the, uh, the sovereignty of God, His uh, foreknowledge of choosing people for Himself, before the foundation of the world, He has already selected uh, people. People that will be uh, in, uh, will experience eternal life. People that would enjoy Him in His presence. This is His sovereign will and he has chosen people to experience His sovereign grace. Before the foundation of the world, God has ordained people to experience redemption in Christ, salvation in Christ, to be in Christ. Now, Paul labors that this is a, a blessing, a great blessing that a Christian uh, experiences. That prior to his conversion, prior 
to His exercise of faith in Christ before the foundation of the world, God has already chosen Him. And as a result, He comes to Christ. Now, He also tackles that to the, to the efficient believers that this blessing you know, is a work of grace from God towards them. And he Paul prays, Paul, Paul prays to them that he would they would understand the 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 majesty, this blessing that God has shown to them. That this blessing is beyond human comprehension. This blessing it is so glorious. And that's why Paul prays no, in, in, in uh, chapter 1, verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of His glorious inheritance and His incomparably great power for us who believe that power is the same is the same as the mighty strength. So, this is the prayer of Paul. And now, in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul uh, brought them to their uh, past so that they would understand the grace of God. Paul reminded them who they were before they are in Christ. This, in, in verse 1, as for you, you were dead in your transgression. You were dead. So, before you experience this blessing, this, this uh, grace that God has poured you upon you, this sal uh, salvation, Paul reminded them that you were dead in your sins. You were dead in your transgressions and sin. Now, Paul says that those who, uh, Jesus Christ said in John that those who sins are slave in sin. Basically, this is the condition of all people. This is the spiritual condition. We are dead on arrival. No? Dead on arrival spiritually because we inherited this sinful nature from our first parents, Adam. And our spiritual condition is dead. And it manifests our deadness of our sin. We are dead in sin because we commit transgressions and sin. These are all manifestation. Manifestation, what's happening inside of us spiritually we were dead in our transgressions and sin meaning we are uh, driven by our nature our desires and our desire is always doing what we really love and what we really like and that is sin we are sinners and in verse 2, in which you used to live when you follow the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air and the spirit who is now at work in those disobedience. So this is now, no? Paul reminded them how they live their lives before they knew Christ. Your life cannot please God because they're... Their lives are following the ways of this world. Their minds, meaning there is always directed to the ways of this world, meaning the system, what the world is doing, we, we, we go with the flow, what the world does. The, the mindset of the world, the cravings of the world, that's what we love. 
before we knew Christ, before we experienced conversion to Christ, this is what we used to do. And if you reflect your life before you knew Christ, this is who we are. Paul is also speaking to us before we knew Christ. And the spirit that works within us, we are influenced by evil. And therefore, those who are not in Christ, those who do not have personal relationship with Christ, cannot please God. Because first and foremost, they are dead in sin. People who are not in Christ are dead in sin. So, this is a metaphor, no? the spiritual condition of a man. Now, we are compared to sa, sa patay. No? Patay cannot express, cannot do anything. Walay pagbati, walay, you know, he cannot respond. And that's the spiritual condition of a man when he was born in the flesh. And Paul goes on, all of us, you know, Paul now includes himself, all of us also live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, following the desires and thoughts like the rest we were by nature, deserving wrath. So, this is who we were before. And if you belong, if you claim that you belong to Christ, if you claim that you put your trust on Christ and this thing describes your life, I think you need to reevaluate your life right now. Because Paul here is talking sa past life sa Osaka Christian. He was not talking about the present life of a Christian. He was talking about the past. No? Sa life sa Osaka Christian. Now, therefore, as, as, a, as, as believer, we need, to, uh, we need to be reminded no, from time to time who we were before. No, it's it's good to be reminded once again. Kaya nga naman, so that we will also be able to uh, be reminded of the grace of God, how He works upon us. No? How He was so good to us. Okay, in verse 4, muna ni ni Paul, because of His great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive. With Christ, even when we were dead in our transgression, it is by grace you have been saved. This is amazing. This is amazing. We agree that the work, the, one of the greatest work of miracle that God did is that when Christ was resurrected from the dead. And we also believe that when a person repents from his sin and puts his trust in Christ, it is also a work of miracle. Because a dead person cannot do that. A dead person cannot repent, cannot trust Christ. He must first be made alive. He, God must do first His work of Miracle upon his spirit. His spirit must be made alive first. His spirit must be regenerated so that he could repent. He could trust Christ. He could come to Christ. And that is a, an initiative that God has done to the person. Okay? When we share the gospel, we share the word of God. But we don't have, we don't have power to save the person. We don't have power to convert the person. That is the work of God alone. And even if I 
search my life back then. Why I trusted Christ. Why I surrendered my life to Christ. And examining my life before I have, though I believe in God, but I love to do what I like. I love sin more. I love to do what is uh, according to my desire, and that is sinning. I believe in God, but I have no desire of God. I don't love God. I don't really uh, take God seriously. I don't have affection towards Jesus. Yes, I have a form of religion in my life, but it's just a, an external thing that somehow I am a religious person, but in reality, I have nothing to do with God because I was dead. When, when the Word of God preached towards me, then there was some, some kind of a, a work of the Holy Spirit in my life that I understood the mercy of God, the grace of God. I, 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 it seems like my mind was open and I saw the glory of the cross of what Christ has done for me. His blood shed, that blood was shed for my forgiveness. And then I come to Christ, surrender my life to Him. You know what, my friend? I cannot credit that to myself. Yes, I was the one who comes to Christ, but unless the work of God's grace working in my life, unless the Holy Spirit opens my eyes, unless the Holy Spirit changes my heart, I won't come to Christ. Then I realize, as I study the Scripture, this particular passage talks about the grace of God. You know, I am a sinner, deserves to be judged by God. You no, know, in verse 3, you know, sa later part, you know, sa Ephesians chapter 2, we were by nature deserving wrath. I deserve the wrath of God. I deserve the punishment. I deserve condemnation because I am a sinner. I rebelled against God. But because of His great mercy, God made me alive. God made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgression. God enables us to believe. God enables us to repent. God is the one who initiated our salvation. He is the one should be glorified. He is the one to be honored because the work of salvation does not come from us. It comes from God. Not God made us alive. Not to make uh, this uh, point uh, clearer, let me give you an illustration. No, before, no, uh, when I was a, a young Christian, somebody shared, no, na, ako na dunga ni siya nga, 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 nga illustration, no, katao laging uh, person nga, di ba, kasagara nga ginagamit nga illustration is this, nga, kuma na barko nga na shipwreck unya ang shipwreck na nalunod ang barko pero ikaw na naglutaw-lutaw sa sa taliwala sa lawod unya taliwala sa lawod na ay coast guard nga ni 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 anha nya gi 
labayan ka o salbabida o niya, nakakaroon pagpili. Nakakaroon pagpili whether magpabilin pa kaya, magpabilin pa ka atong wood, nga lutaw-lutaw ka, o niya, or imutong kwaon ang salbabida para ka masalbar. Naara sa imuha ang pagpili whether kwaon ni mo ang salbabida or magpabilin ka sa wood. Amang get ang choice. Siyempre, mo embrace. Pero naayaw ba niya akong gisiran, nga ila, magpabilin daw sila sa salbabida o oh, katong sa wood. Pero, now, dari, kung naay pagpili, but pa sa but, ana, kung pili mo, napali, ginatawag sa, to, uh, sa, sa ka-person nga moral ability or na righteousness to choose. Somehow, that person is not dead. Why? Because naamang di ay ginatawag nga ability to choose. But here, now, when I understood this, the illustration is different. Nalunod giday ang tao sa, sa, sa lawood. Uban sa, muning lahi nga senaryo, uban sa barko nalunod. Then, na ay nag-rescue, na ay usak ka, kanang ginatawag Coast Guard ni Salom dito sa lawood, unya gikuha ang patayng lawas, gipadto sa barko, unya gi-resuscitate, para kanang tao nga nalupat, kanang patay na nga tao, gi-resuscitate balik, para mabuhi, o garoon makarespan. Now, kanang illustration, mas accurate sa diri. Kaya klaro kay diri, God made us alive. We are not just sick, but we are really dead spiritually and our, our deadness of sin affects the whole of our being, our mind, will, emotion. We are slave of sin. And what, that, what God did is that He made us alive in Christ so that we can respond in faith, trusting Christ, and repent from our sin. That is the work of God sa tuang kinabuhi. And this is what grace means. It means it does not come from us. It comes from God. Why you are saved. Ingon in diri, sa verse 6, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms. This is what happened. When a person is made alive, is united in Christ, is with Christ. And God did this so that the coming ages, God will show His incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ. We cannot credit this to ourselves. We cannot credit this sa tuang mga ginabuhat. We can only credit this to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Holy Spirit, to God the Father who initiated to save us. And the most famous verse in verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. Salvation is a gift from God. Grace or gift is the same. And this grace is expressed, no? Gihatag ni sa ginoo, and it is a grace, for it's by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Why? Because even the faith that we exercise to uh, trust Christ, to repent from our sin, it's a gift of God. It's a gift of God so that no one can boast. So when you are uh, in in in, in uh, kanang when you face kanang challenges when you face difficulties in life 
no? Be reminded once again that God has already given you, you know, this blessing that He has given you life in Christ. And that is, you know, the greatest blessing that we have. So this motivates us all the more to continually serve Christ, to honor Christ because we are made alive. And this life that we have, this faith that we have is a living faith. That's why we exercise it manifests in our actions. We serve Christ, we love Christ, we pray because the faith that God has given us is a living faith. It's a saving faith as well. Not by works so that no one can boast. In verse 10, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, in conclusion, God is gracious. God is merciful. God is loving for He has chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world. And those that God has chosen, He draws them to Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit manifest in their lives, making their dead spirit alive, enabling us to trust the work of Christ on the cross, trust the obedience of Christ, and forsaking sin, repenting from sin. And this faith that we have is maintained by the Holy Spirit working in us, enabling us also to serve Him all the more. God is great. God is good. God is uh, glorified in our lives. Praise be to God for this spiritual resurrection that He has given us. Praise be to His name. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you praise and honor for this amazing truth that we have experienced, O oh Lord. That even though we are dead in our sins and trespasses, we cannot save ourselves. We don't love you. We, uh, we do our own way. Yet, you have shown your grace upon us that you have regenerated our hearts. Make, me, you made us alive in Christ, giving us the gift of faith and repentance to trust the work of Christ on the cross and His work of obedience. And Lord, thank you so much because through this, O oh Lord, we are saved. Through this, we are redeemed because you made us alive. And, oh God, I pray that your people who are listening, oh Lord, in this uh, meditation will also experience this spiritual resurrection that you alone can do. And for us Christians who, are now, who have experienced this already, may this truth motivates us to continually serving you, honoring you, looking forward of that, that, of that day that we will be with you in your heaven. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. I'm Stefan, and tonight we'll be presenting the Prayer for Urgent Reform of Pandemic Prevention and Response Systems. A panel of leading experts is calling on the global community to end the COVID-19 pandemic by immediately implementing a series of bold recommendations to redistribute, fund, and increase the availability and manufacturing capacity for vaccines, and to apply proven public health measures urgently and consistently in every country. 
It is also recommending that national governments and the international community immediately adopt a package of reforms to transform the global pandemic preparedness and response system and prevent a future pandemic. The Independent Panel for Pandemic Preparedness and Response, or the Independent Panel, was appointed by the World Health Organization, or the HWO, Director General, in response to a World Health Assembly resolution calling for an independent, impartial, and comprehensive review of experiences gained and lessons to be learned from the current pandemic. The review was also asked to provide recommendations to improve capacity for global pandemic preparedness, prevention, and response. The panel released its findings and recommendations on May 12, 2021 with its main report, COVID-19, Make It the Last Pandemic. Let us pray for our national governments and the international community to heed the recommendations of this panel and implement their bold recommendations promptly so as to the end this current pandemic and protect the world from the next threat. If our leaders act wisely, they can prevent this from happening again. More importantly, we ask the Lord to bless said bold reforms so they will be truly effective. Psalms chapter 18, verses 30 to 32. This God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in Him. For who is God but the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? The God who equipped me with strength and made my way blameless. The prayer points will now be flashed in front of your screens.
Let us pray. Lord, we pray that as a community, we will become united in this fight against COVID. We pray that those in high and suitable places of power and authority will become united and cooperate with each other to create suitable implementations to help mitigate and even stop this pandemic. We also pray that we as citizens will abide by such implementations and cooperate with the government and our fellow citizens to do our part. And we pray that in all of this, we hope that your presence, your spirit will be with us, guiding us, giving us strength, courage to not fear this pandemic, and that hope in you that we will really get this through by your grace and by your power. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good evening. I am Michael, Michael Angelo Sabian, and tonight we'll be praying for an end to the Israeli Palestinian conflict. The rest of the world should not only be silent spectators as the conflict intensifies and the death toll grows while the Isra Israeli military and militant group Hamas continue to exchange barrage of airstrikes and rocket attacks. One news report says that many Filipinos in Israel, especially in coastal south southern cities and in Gaza, are left in trauma. As Philippine labor authorities prepare for rescue amid the escalating conflict between Israeli security forces and Palestinian militants. There are currently around 29,700 OFWs in Israel, including 24,000 who still have their work visas. There are a lot of violence in our world, even amidst this pandemic, and many lives continue to be marred by conflict. Only God can grant true peace, and, and so we ask the Lord to put an end to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Numbers chapter 6, verse 26. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. The prayers will be shown on your screen.
Let's pray. Almighty oh, Father, we pray for the uh, safety of the people af- affected by the uh, conflict between Israel and Palestinian militants and uh, uh, that uh, the, the conflict will not harm any more people and uh, I pray for uh, uh, it, it, we will stop and also for the leaders that they will reach into a peaceful conclusion and uh, you will soften the heart of the leaders, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us tonight. And before we will bid goodbye, we will give these following announcements. First, we hope that you can join us again next time in our virtual prayer gathering. As usual, we will be broadcasting it via our Facebook page and YouTube channel. And also reminding everyone to participate in our Sunday gathering. We have the in-person gathering at 7, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 5.30 p.m. And most of our in-person gatherings will be broadcasted online. And also, with prudence and wisdom, we encourage wider group and IDM leaders to meet with your members, whether virtually or by health protocol adherent in-person gathering. Also, we encourage families to make most of our family devotional we publish on our Facebook page bi-weekly. And we encourage you to like and follow our Facebook pages so that you will be kept posted of what's up at GCAF. The handles are at Journey with GCAF, at Inside Out GCAF, at GCAF Worship. And also subscribe to our YouTube channels, Golden City Alliance Fellowship, and GCAF Worship. And second to the last, we invite college students and single adults to the coffee night over Zoom on June 3 at 7.30 p.m. Sign up on the link found in the description of this video. And for the high schoolers, we encourage you to join our T180 gathering still over Zoom on June 5, that is Saturday, at 7.30 p.m. Sign up still on the link which is found in the description of this video. So thank you so much, guys, for being with us. So shall we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for granting us wisdom to understand your word as it was shared by Kuya Joe. And thank you that as a church family, we are able to pray for the pressing concerns about covid and even the crisis in the Middle East, especially between Israel and the Palestinian people. Thank you so much, dear God, that for the assurance that you are hearing our prayers. We declare our trust and confidence in you that after we have entrusted all the cares, we have now the peace that you alone can provide. And for tonight, may you grant us a good night's rest and we entrust to you our families, that you will protect us, you will provide all of our needs, and also for those in the front lines, continue to strengthen them. And we pray that you will renew our strength for tomorrow. Thank you for the future grace, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Good night.